Hello, everybody. You probably have learned some of this, maybe all of this in a past course, but what we're hoping to do is survey a bunch of things that maybe you know or maybe you don't. You'll brush up on them. Uh, make sure you know the proper notation um, and also maybe help you unlearn some unhelpful ideas that you might have picked up in the past that we are afraid might mislead you. So let's imagine we have mixed together 20 M&Ms and 20 Skittles together in a bag. Great plan. Um, and the color distribution is shown here. For all of these problems, uh, it's going to boil down eventually to this equation. The probability of some particular event is going to be the number of outcomes where that event happens divided by the total possible number of outcomes. Um, so what's an event? An event might be drawing a blue candy, or it might be drawing a green or a yellow candy, or it might be drawing a red M&M. Um, and later when we draw more than one thing at a time, it might be drawing exactly three M&Ms out of five candies total, that sort of thing. Um, so without further ado, let's jump in. So probability of drawing one Skittle, if I choose one candy, if I look over here, there are 20 Skittles out of 20, 40 candies total, so you'd write 20 over 40, which of course you could simplify into a probability of one half. We're going to ask you to keep them unsimplified like this because it makes it easier to understand how you are thinking about the computation, so please don't simplify. Uh, probability of drawing a blue candy, um, so again, we look at total number of candies that we could have drawn which satisfy this description of an event. So how many candies are blue? Uh, so here's blue, there's six blue candies. And again, out of 40 total candies we could have drawn, so six out of 40. Okay, what's the probability it's a blue Skittle? So time to unlearn a thing you might have learned in the past. Some courses, uh, when they go over probability, teach kind of rules, like certain keywords like and tell you particular procedures like multiply. Um, and here we can see the probability of a blue Skittle. We could think about that as saying, what's the probability the candy we drew is blue and also the candy that we drew is a Skittle? We just found the probability of being a Skittle and the probability of being blue. So if you'd learned that and means multiply, you could multiply those together, but that would be silly. Because as we can see up here, there are no blue Skittles. So the probability of us drawing a blue Skittle is zero because there aren't any. Um, so and doesn't mean multiply. Um, there is a certain situation where you'd want to multiply probabilities, and we'll see that on the back page. Um, but I just want to emphasize that all the time you should think about what it is that you're trying to find the probability of and do what makes sense. Don't try and learn... Uh, associations that will lead you to procedures um, that you use without thinking about them. So if we want to know the probability that our candy is both green and an M&M, all we have to do is look at how many candies are both green and M&Ms. That's two out of 40 candies we might draw total. So it's just the original uh, probability equation all over again. Okay, so uh, that's and. Let's look about let's look at or in the next two problems. So what's the probability it's a green candy or a yellow candy? So in this case, we can add up all the candies that are green, six, and all the candies that are yellow, seven. So why did I add things up here? It's just the same equation. I want to know how many possible candies uh, are either yellow or green. And so since there are six green and seven yellow, uh, there are 13 total that satisfy the description of the event I want to know the probability of. Um, so 13 over 40. Um, but if I did the same thing here, if I just think, oh, I just need to add things together, it would go completely wrong. Let's see why. So you might think, okay, there are six green candies. There are 20 M&Ms. So let's add the six green candies to the 20 M&Ms. That's all the candies I could draw that are either green or M&Ms. And divided by 40. Um, the problem here is that we have counted the two green M&Ms twice. So we counted the two green M&Ms as part of the six green candies, and then we counted them again as part of the 20 M&Ms. Um, so what we really want in the numerator here is the total number of candies that are described by this phrase, that are either green or M&Ms. Um, but there, it's just not true that there are 26 candies that are described that way. Um, there's actually only 24. So think about it this way. Uh, there are four green Skittles, and then there are 20 M&Ms. 
And so that covers all the possibilities, just those 20 M&Ms plus the additional four green Skittles. So again, rely on your natural understanding of what you're trying to count rather than rules like or means add. So the final answer there is 24 out of 40 is the probability. Okay, for this next problem, I just wanted to show you some notation that you might not have seen. So here it says, if I draw a Skittle, what's the probability that it's red? So I'm not just drawing any old candy. I'm drawing a candy, but I already know that it's a Skittle. So the way that you notate this is you would say, um, what's the probability that the candy is red? And then you draw a vertical bar and then Skittle. And what the vertical bar means is the word given. So what's the probability of being red given that you have already drawn a Skittle? So the thing afterwards is uh, a condition that we assume is already true. Um, and that modifies the pool of total possible outcomes because if we already know that it's a Skittle, I'm not looking to divide by 40 possible things I might have drawn because there's only 20 possible Skittles. So here I'd look at how many red Skittles there are, that's four divided by how many total Skittles there are, which is 20. Um, so go ahead and try that same notation here. If I draw a red candy, what's the probability it's a Skittle? So go ahead and write that out using this vertical bar notation. What's given and what's the thing we're trying to find the probability of? So here it's the other way around. If I draw a red candy, that's given, and I wanna know the probability of it being a Skittle given that it is red. Um, so here, the total pool of candies I'm drawing from are the red ones, because I already know it was red. And the question is, what's the probability of it being a Skittle if I know it was already red? And the answer is four out of six. Okay, finally, what's the probability that it's not a yellow candy? So let me make a quick observation here. Um, the probability that we get a yellow candy is, what is it, how many yellows are there? There's seven out of 40. Oops, seven out of 40. Okay, um, what's the probability that it's not yellow? Well, that's the thing we're trying to figure out. Um, but if I add up all the things that are yellow and all the things that are not yellow, that's just all the things. Um, so I know that the probability of being yellow and the probability of being not yellow, when I combine those together, it should be uh, 100% because one of those two things has to happen. So the probability of being yellow plus our mystery probability of being not yellow has to be one. Um, so you've probably seen this idea before. The idea is that the probability of being not yellow is just one minus the probability of being yellow. Um, and the idea is that these two events are called complementary whenever that happens. Um, complementary events are events whose probability sums to be one. Um, and there's a special notation. Instead of writing not yellow, you could write yellow and then with a little uh, exponent or superscript C, meaning complement. Um, so the probability of the complement of being yellow is one minus the probability of being yellow. So let's write that one minus seven over 40. Um, and of course you could solve this uh, the same way we've been solving all of them. So we could just add up how many things are not yellow. So we could add six and eight and six and six and four and three and divide by 40 and that ends up being the same thing. Okay, so uh, the things that might be new here, unlearn that and means multiply because it doesn't always or doesn't always mean add. Uh, practice using this notation where the probability, or you're, we're finding the probability of something given something else. And then this idea of the complement of an event being one minus the probability of that event. All right, join us for the back page.